Hello friends, today I am going to teach you round robin scheduling algorithm. So you must we have been going through FCFS shortage of first time and now round robin scheduling algorithm. As you know we have two types of algorithm. First is primitive and another is non-primitive. Primitive means the processes which are executing may be primitive from its process and in non-primitive the processes which are not uh, which are executing will uh, not be printed until and unless its burst time is completed. So in round robin it is primitive that is according to quantum time set for every processes uh, as it overs the process will be printed. So as we set here the quantum time to 4 for this question we have a question process up to 5 arrival time and burst time so we know that uh, we need a ready queue in this in ready queue we will be maintaining uh, the status of the process running and the, as it is known as queue means the processes which are in the queue which will be executed the next and are ready and a gantt chart So let's see, we we'll start from the arrival 0, at 0 we have process 1, so we add it to the process 1 and it will go up to quantum time 2, as it burst time is 5 but we will uh, take it to only 2 time because the quantum time is set that up to this only 2 units, only up to 2 units each process will be executed. So here burst time will be rest with 3. And it will be executed up to 2 and in ready queue P1 will be added. And as we know it is executed up to 2. So our other processes which are uh, having arrival time 0, 1 and 2 will be also added to the ready queue. So we have P2 and P3. So P2 and P3 are added in the ready queue because it is up to arrival 2. We have been reached here in the Gantt chart. And uh, rather than 1 and 2 is for P2 and P3 as you know P1 is still left with 3 time so P1 will be again added to the ready queue now you have P2 P2 is having arrival time 1 and burst time 2 so it will be executed up to 4 now you, are, you have been till arrival time 4 so up to 4 we have process P4 and P5. So it will be added in the queue P4 and P5. As you can see that P2 is no more left. So we will not add further in the queue. It will be over from here. Now next is P3. P3 is having arrival time 3. So we will execute it up to 6 only 2 and it will be added to the queue. As you can see, we have all processes are already added in the ready queue because up to 4 all were added in the ready queue. So now only P3 will be added in the ready queue. No more processes are left to be added furthermore. And it will be removed. As it is left 1, so it is added in the ready queue. Now P1. P1 is left with 3 so it will be left with 1 it will be executed up to 8 and still it is left so it will be added in the ready queue now P4 P4 is left with 4 so it will be left with 2 it will be added and up to here it will be executed now P5 P5 is 1 so is no more for the left so it will be executed and one will be added as you can see that quantum time 2 is mentioned but here p5 is only for one burst time so we can only add one unit and we can go more we don't need to add it as a two quantum time or we can it's not compulsory to take it at 12 only one time is sufficient so it is added 10 to plus 1 11 and now it's over now we are left with p3 P3 is added 
P3 is 1, so it becomes 12. P1 is also left with 1, so it's 13. And P4 is left with 2, so P4 is added, it's left to 15. So you can see our Gantt chart is also created, our EDQ is also over, and our all process are executed. Now you know the completion time. These are completion time for the processes P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. We are going to calculate completion time, turnaround time, and waiting time. So completion time is that the last step the process are completed at the last stage the process are completed is the completion time as you can see P4 is completed at the 15 so the completion time of P4 is 15 P1 is completed at 13 so the completion time for P1 is 13 P3 is completed at 12 so completion time for P3 is 12 and then you can see P2 is over at 4 so completion time for P2 is 4 and P5 is over at 11 so completion time for P5 is 11 turn around time formula for turn around time is completion minus arrival time so completion time of 11 of p1 is 13 and arrival time is 0 so turnaround time will be 13 for p2 4 minus 1 3 for p3 12 minus 2 10 for p4 15 minus 3 12 and 11 minus 4 7 this is the turnaround time for p1 p2 p3 and P4 and P5 and now waiting time is that how many how much amount of time it has to wait uh, to be completed to reach this completion so it will be like turnaround time is the complete time it required minus the burst time the time turnaround time is the time it take to be completed and the burst time is the amount of time it's itself process need and in turnaround time the process it takes to complete and burst time it was required is like 5 time 5 seconds but it completed up to 13 seconds so the when we subtract turnaround time to my uh, burst time we'll get the waiting time for each processes so now turnaround time for p1 is 13 and burst time is 5 so 3 minus 5 is 8 3 minus 2 1 10 minus 3, 7, 12 minus 4, 8, and 7 minus 1, 6. So this is the complete chart you got for completion time, turnaround time, and waiting time. Now you can easily calculate by yourself the average turnaround time and average waiting time. Thank you.